Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the Director of Education at Stevenson Dental Solutions. I'm also Emeritus Professor of Clinical Dentistry at UCLA. And this is our teaching center where we conduct many hands-on courses all year long. Hey now, before we get started, I'd like to make a brief introduction about a product that I personally use to manage my practice. It's called CareStack. CareStack is an all-in-one cloud-based platform designed for the U.S. dentist that wants to run and manage their business without the need for multiple software subscriptions to put pressure on your bottom line. CareStack provides all of this functionality to run the contemporary dental practice in one cloud-based solution. If you'd like to learn more, scan this QR code and book a brief demo with one of their specialists. Thanks, CareStack, for sponsoring this channel. Okay, so today we're going to cover the amalgam restoration and polish on the Kilgore number 3 MOL. This was a prep done by one of our students. She did a really great job, so I said, hey, let me restore this. I'm going to utilize a Toffelmeyer matrix retainer with a .0015 inch band. This band is about 35 to 40 microns thick. It's very thin and it fits easily between the teeth. Once it's been secured around the tooth, go ahead and tighten it, and then you're going to want to insert a wedge. I prefer the wooden wedges from the lingual because that's where we have the largest embrasure space. And make sure you get a good seal. We're then going to add the Barton Matrix. And the Barton Matrix is a technique to provide a wall upon which to condense when you have lingual extensions. And this technique was developed by Dr. Barton many years ago, I believe at the University of North Carolina. We insert a wedge, which can be secured with a compound or just with a little bit of pressure. And then we're going to use that to condense against. So we're going to burnish the band with a little ball of burnisher and make sure we have adequate contact with the adjacent tooth. And I think we'll be ready to roll. Today we're going to utilize an admixed alloy. This amalgam is being placed with a small condenser and we're going to use the condenser with a fair amount of force to make sure that we've adapted the amalgam really well to all of the walls, not only the horizontal walls but also the vertical walls. We use the amalgam carrier to keep adding more amalgam because we're going to add more amalgam than we actually need but this is really important to overfill the cavity with amalgam so that we can burnish the areas adjacent to the finish line. This is a Hollenbeck carver used to condense up against the lingual and I think it works really well. Now we're utilizing a little bit of a larger condenser uh, like a medium sized condenser and you can even get to a large condenser if necessary. So we continue to fill with this admixed amalgam made by Kerr. This is called Contour. I like this amalgam because it gives us plenty of working time it, it's usually around 12 to 15 minutes of working time, which is nice because it allows you to, you know, develop really good anatomy. Once again, the Hollenbeck carver there on the lingual to condense in an area where we cannot get a small condenser. The burnisher is used just to confirm the condensation, make sure that we've overfilled the preparation and that we have adequate condensation against the margins. An explorer is used to remove the embrasure area and now we're ready to remove the assembly. I'm not going to do any more carving at this point. I like to remove the entire assembly right away holding it down with a little condenser and then rotating out the band with the wedge still in place. And now the last thing we remove is the wedge. Then we're back to the Hollenbeck carver to start to contour this lingual area and we're condensing it while we're removing excess so this works sort of as a dual purpose instrument at this point and we're just trying to find the margins. Once we have a reasonable uh, contour we'll use the IPC interproximal carver uh, in interproximally to remove any amalgam that is beyond the margin and then we're ready to move on to the uh, next step which would be to utilize the discoid and the cleoid discoid and the purpose here is very simple 
you must find the cable surface margin. So we use the instrument perpendicular to the margin so you don't ditch the margin and create a submarginal area. I think probably the most challenging thing with amalgams is to remember your outline form so you remove all of the flash. I think it's pretty easy to avoid ditching by utilizing the discoid in this manner, but I think what's difficult is to find the, the margin exactly without leaving flash behind. And there's a significant amount of flash still left on this amalgam, but we're utilizing the, the cotton Q-tip to remove any excess and to create a little bit of a smooth surface. This is a really great technique that I learned from Dr. Harry Chevelle many years ago. Now we're going to scoop out the fossa. We scoop out the central fossa, we scoop out the mesial fossa, and we scoop out the distal fossa. And this likens to maybe removing a little scoop of ice cream out of a tub or something. But it's really helpful to make this determination in your mind exactly where you have the low points of the anatomical form. This is one of the most helpful techniques I've ever learned. And I owe this technique to Dr. Robert Wolcott, who taught at UCLA for many, many years. He was the chairman of operative dentistry at UCLA. Thank you so much, Dr. Wolcott. We're now going to utilize the cleoid to look for the grooves adjacent to your amalgam and follow them down into the amalgam. So amalgam carving is about creating this harmony with the existing tooth structure all the while making sure you don't ditch the margins. So the cleoid would be great for finding those grooves and establishing those natural contours that flow from one fossa to another. I try to keep the cleoid touching the margin when I'm developing the bulk of the anatomical form so that we don't ditch the margins. Not only can you pull the cleoid like this, but you can also slide it back this way. That sliding motion down the groove into the central groove area can be very effective at developing nice anatomy. You'll notice that while you do this, because you're leaving the instrument partially on tooth structure and partially on the amalgam, you're going to remove flash that has extended beyond your cable surface margin. Now it's nice to try to get most of this flash away before utilizing the cleoid, but sometimes it's just unavoidable. You know, dentistry is about progressive refinement. We find ourselves at junctures throughout procedures taking opportunities to make things better. We notice problems and we fix the problems as we go. It's not about getting it exactly right the very first time. We are not machines. We are human beings. We will make errors. We need to consider this while we're restoring teeth, that errors will be made, but it's the diligent, excellence-minded dentist who will take the time to correct the errors rather than ignore them and to see the errors rather than not see them. Sometimes that requires some help from a mentor pointing those out to you. There you can see that we had a pretty significant amount of flash that just got removed. Continue to remove flash as you carve the anatomy. Try to keep the central groove in the center of your amalgam restoration. After all, that was how you started this preparation. When the student performed this prep, she was very good at keeping the preparation centered over the original fissures and pits in this simulated carious tooth. I like to utilize a little move like this where we can make the marginal ridge less bulky, but also to create a V shape as viewed from the mesial. So it becomes more like the natural anatomical form of a tooth. 
Notice how much working time you have on this particular alloy. You've got plenty of time to remove excess. You've got plenty of time to enhance the anatomy without creating a scratched surface. This is the IPC just doing a little finish work on the occlusal embrasure. At this point, let's make sure the interproximal contact is appropriate. And I like to take an explorer and pierce it through the floss to create this shredding effect. And what this does is all these little fibers will more easily fit between the teeth and they'll also pick up excess amalgam at the gingival and any interproximal area where you might have some excess. Push it away from the contact before you slide it through, away from the contact, and that way you can preserve your contact. But going back and forth with the shredded floss is very effective. And I think you can see that the interproximal area of this tooth is nice and smooth and we're in a situation where we are ready to uh, let the patient go, check the occlusion, and then bring them back either 24 hours later or at a subsequent visit when they're coming in for recare anyway. And so this polishing sequence here is comprised of some discs. These are Morris discs. I use a medium garnet fine sand fine cuddle. I'll utilize some Shofu abrasives, cups, and points, and then I'll use some carbides, which have shapes that are like cleoid discoids and carvers and things like that. So we're going to start the polishing off with the 7102, and I'm using a slow speed friction grip attachment. And what we're trying to do here is get the tooth and the amalgam on the same plane. And there may be a very, very small discrepancy in some areas where there may be just a little bit of flash or a submarginal area that can be corrected. This burr is great because it's really pointy and it can get into the groove areas very nicely. You just take your time and go over the anatomy and see areas where you might need to enhance it. This is the 7404 and it's a little bit of a rounder end, but I think it works maybe a little bit better on broader surfaces, larger surfaces, not such a small pointy burr. It's got more of a rounded end to it and this will work nicely for uh, creating some smoothness while you're going around the amalgam. You can use this, uh, once again, in the slow speed friction grip attachment. I wouldn't use a high speed for this. I think if we're using electric handpiece, it would work, work well at about 20,000 RPM total speed. So if you're using a one-to-one -one handpiece, just set it at 20,000. But if you're using a step-up one-to-five motor uh, attachment, then you're going to want to set this down around 4,000 RPM so you don't uh, get it too too fast. Remember, the, the tooth should not be heated up in any way. This is all being done with slow speed and ample amounts of water spray or air spray at times. So uh, the key is to keep the tooth healthy and happy and improve the patient's comfort. Now we're just going through the disc. This is, that was the first one was the sand and now we're going to go to a cuddle disc. And it's nice to fit into the embrasure areas. It does a really great job of just removing any excess you might have in those areas.
discs are great for flat surfaces and also surfaces that may be in the embrasure areas. And when we're ready to move on to the Shofu abrasives, make sure that we're spraying the tooth with ample amounts of air spray and we don't heat up the tooth during the finishing procedure. Just continue to utilize the point with the slow speed until we get the surface as smooth as we can with this particular abrasive and then we move on to the greeny point which is going to bring the luster up to a much greater level. The surface will become even smoother and I find that as you get the amalgam smoother and smoother you'll see even more of the defects in your approach towards amalgam restoration. It's a little bit of a humbling experience because you do get to see some areas that did not seal quite as well and maybe some ripples and bumps on along the surface that uh, you may wish to try to avoid in the future. We can use cups as well. This is a greeny cup uh, and then we can use super greeny cups and super greeny points. So we're going to finish this amalgam up with the super greeny point and plenty of air spray to keep the tooth nice and cool and give us a nice final result. I don't think that polishing amalgam is an absolute requirement in restorative dentistry, but it does provide for a more comfortable restoration. It's uh, gonna be less likely to trap plaque and I think that they're uh, nice to look at on recall visits. Well, that's uh, the result we had today. It looks pretty good. I want to thank my student for preparing the tooth and helping me make this video and wishing you all the very best. Take care.